Okay, in this video we're going to cover the really important skill of being able to write the formula for an ionic compound. Um, this will crop up in the GCSE exams in year 10 and 11 and you can't write balanced symbol equations until you can write the formula for ionic compounds. Um, so when I say the formula for ionic compounds, I mean, for example, sodium bromide has got the formula NaBr. But potassium oxide has got the formula K2O. And aluminium chloride has got the formula AlCl3. So where have these numbers come from? How do we know that sodium bromide is just NaBr, but potassium oxide is K2O? Really, really important that we can do this, and you will need the help of a table of ions. Now, in your exam, your table of ions will be at the back of your exam paper, just before the periodic table. The table of ions is split into two sides. We've got the positive ions on one side, and the negative ions on the other. And it will give you the name of the ion and the formula of the ion. So, sodium ion is Na+. The potassium ion is K+. But you'll see that some of them are more than just positive, they're 2 plus or 3 plus. And similarly, on the negative side, you'll see that some negative ions are just negative, some are 2 negative. Um, and it's really important that you use your table of ions, first of all, to find out what the charge of your ions are. In all of the formula that we're going to be asked to find, uh, there will be one positive ion and there will be one negative ion. And you'll need to use your table of ions to find out the charge on the positive and the charge on the negative. Okay, let's have a go at doing four to begin with then. Okay, so sodium chloride. We'll do this one first. We have to look up sodium in our table, and we can see in our table that sodium is Na+. So underneath sodium, I'm gonna write down Na+. And then we've got chloride. So we look in our table, we find chloride, it's Cl-. So I write down Cl-. Now what we need to do next is compare the number of pluses and the number of minuses, negatives, and see if they balance out. So currently I've written just one positive and just one negative. One pos positive cancels out one negative. The charges are balanced. So we simply cancel the two charges out, ignore those and write our NaCl next to each other in a one-to-one -one ratio. So that's the simplest example you could have where it's just one plus, one minus, one plus, cancels out one minus and it's a one-to-one -one ratio and we write NaCl. Right, let's have a go at magnesium oxide. Um, I go back to my table of ions. I see that magnesium is Mg2 plus. And I see that oxide is O2 minus. Okay, so this time I've got two positive and two minus. Now again, two positives will cancel out with two negatives. The charges we can say are balanced. Two positives, two negatives. So we can ignore the positives and negatives now. We can think of them as cancelling each other out. And again, we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So MgO. Okay, let's have a go at a couple where the charges are not equal and don't cancel each other out. Um, we'll do this one next, magnesium chloride, so it's Mg2 plus Cl minus. Now this time I've got two positives and only one negative. Now we need to get it so that the charges are equal, the charges cancel out. Um, so if we've got two positives, we only have one negative, or we want another negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write another Cl minus. Now, if we compare our positives to our negatives, we've got two positives and we've got two negatives. So the two positive cancel out the two negative. And I write MgCl2. Mg, because I've just got one Mg written. Cl2, because I've had to write two Cls for the charges to balance out. 
Okay, let's have a go over here. Sodium is Na plus. Oxide is O2 minus. Are the charges balanced? No, I've got one positive, but I've got two negatives. So I'm going to need another positive. So I'll write another Na plus. Now I've got two positives and two negatives. So the two positive cancel out the two negatives. And I write down my formula. How many Na's have I had to write? Well, I've had to write two. So Na little two. How many oxygens have I had to write? I've just got the one oxygen. Na2O. Okay, I'll give you a few questions on these fairly simple examples, and then we'll look at some more complicated examples with compound ions. A few questions, pause the video, and then unpause to see the answers. Okay, if you got on okay with those first questions, have a go at some slightly trickier ones now. Um, these, we're going to do the same process, but this time we're going to use some compound ions. Now, compound ions are simply ions, charged particles, that contain more than one element. So this first compound ion here is called carbonate, and carbonate is made from carbon and oxygen. So it's two elements, so this is a compound ion. Um, hydroxide is made from oxygen and hydrogen, and sulfate is made from sulfur and oxygen. You can see their charges are in the top right hand corner. So CO3 and the charge is 2 minus, OH and the charge is minus, SO4 and the charge is 2 minus. So let's have a go at using some compound ions and writing the formula for the ionic compounds. Okay, we'll start with calcium hydroxide. Again, you'll need to look at your table of ions, and you can see from your table of ions that calcium is Ca2+, and hydroxide is OH-. Okay, now remember we need the pluses and the minuses to cancel out. At the moment we've got two pluses and only one minus, so we need another minus, so I'm going to write another hydroxide ion. Okay, now that I've written another one, we've got two pluses and two minuses, so that they cancel each other out, they're balanced, the charges, and we need to write down the formula of the compound. Now, what you might be tempted to do is just write CaOH, and as there's two of them, put a little two. But if we look at what this means, this means one calcium, one oxygen, and two hydrogens. We have written one calcium, but we've written two oxygens, not one, and we've written two hydrogens. So this is not right, that's wrong. And um, We need to show that we've got not just two hydrogens, but we've got two OHs. So we're gonna use brackets, a bit like we do in maths. And actually the correct answer is CA, because we've got one CA written, and we've got two lots of OH, so we write down OH in brackets and we put a 2 on the outside of the bracket to show we've got two lots of whatever's inside the bracket. Okay, let's have a go. Calcium nitrate. Calcium is Ca2+. Nitrate is NO3-. Okay, how many pluses have we got? We've got two pluses. How many negatives? We've got one negative. So what do we need more of? We're going to need another negative, so we've got two of each. So I will write NO3 minus. Now we've got two plus and two minus. Okay, but again, we're going to need to use brackets because we've got two lots of a compound iron. We're going to need to put the NO3 in brackets. So the correct formula is CA in brackets N. O3, close brackets, how many NO3s did we write? We wrote down two. Okay, uh, sodium carbonate, sodium is Na plus, carbonate is CO3 2 minus, always start by finding those on your table of ions, 
and then try and make the pluses and the minuses balanced, equal to each other. We've got one plus and we've got two minuses, so we're going to need to write another n a plus. Now we've got two positives and two negatives. Okay, now because we need two lots of sodium and sodium is not the compound iron and we only need one lot of carbonate, you don't need to use brackets for this one. You only need to put a compound iron in brackets if there's more than one of it. Carbonate is our compound iron, there's only one, so we don't need to put it in brackets and we can write Na, there's two Na's and CO3. Do we need to put it in brackets? No, because there's only one of it. Okay, final example, ammonium carbonate. So ammonium is a compound iron and carbonate is a compound iron. So ammonium is NH4 plus. Again, this is all written, given to you in your table of ions. Carbonate, CO3 two minus. How many positives have we got? We've got one positive. How many negatives? We've got two negatives. So we're going to need another positive. NH4 plus. Now we've got two positives and two negatives, but we've got two lots of a compound iron. So this compound iron, because there's two of it, will need to go in brackets. And we always have the positive iron first. So it'll be NH4, how many NH4s are there? There's two, and CO3 doesn't need to go in brackets because we only have one of it. Have a go at some questions on compound ions. A few questions, pause the video, and then unpause to see the answers.